the way to the mic stand. So, ladies and gentlemen, start again with your polite applause, please, my friends. Very good. Build up to enthusiasm, that's better. And then I'm through and cheer as loud as we can. One, two, three, cheer! Let us stand all of Jack and got the laziest accent in the world. But it's the only accent where it's alright to say dudes. Doesn't sound good when I say it. Dudes. Dudes? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, dude. Where am I from? Someone's super impatient about it as well. I must know where he's from. Maybe he'll tell us. Maybe he will. Maybe that's why he was doing that stuff about the accents in the first place. Maybe that's why. I'm originally from Cambridgeshire, not Cambridge. Yeah, because Cambridge is full of posh wankers on bikes. But we don't like it. Posh wankers on bikes in Cambridge, for convenience sake I'll say I'm from Cambridge, because no one's going to know where I'm from. But in Cambridge just full of these guys on bikes with scarves no matter what the time of the year. Just riding around, like, oh Hugo, you going to ride our bike? Ah. That, or they're not. But I also live quite close to a place called Peterborough. And I don't like Peterborough because Peterborough is a shit up. And I'm not going to say this where I'm from, but the thing with Peterborough is they've still got posh accents, even though it's shit. So Peter was like, oh, Daniel, should we ride our bike and stab some people? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Scary, don't want to be there. Horrible. And I live out in the countryside, and a lot of people think it's great living out in the countryside. They think, like, when I tell them, it's like, oh, I live out in Cambridgeshire. People are just like, oh, that must be lovely. It's like, not when you're 25. No, not this way. <laughs> It's a great place to retire. It's a, like, it's a lovely place to grow up. Just climbing trees and avoiding pedos. That's all we did. <laughs> all when I child it was, and it was lovely. It was great. But I still live at home with my mum. And like, I've, just, I've just moved out of the, the garage, in fact. I moved out of the garage. Lived in the garage for a year, because I went away for a month with my sister and her boyfriend. They had two kids. They ran out of money. They had to move back inside. And the kids were only three and five, by the way. They weren't really helping with the financial situation <laughs> at all. Refused to get jobs, these lazy, lazy kids. They get moved in, my mum moves me into the garage. And my mum was super pleased with it as well. She turned the garage into a bedroom. And there might be some parents in the room be like, we've got a fucking garage, we could do this. <laughs> my mum was like, Jack, you won't even know it was the garage. Yes, I will, mum. <laughs> so I lived here when it was a fucking garage. <laughs> Who gets tricked after a month? If I turned this room into an ice cream and you went away and came back a month later, how many of you would be like, oh, look, there's a bit of ice cream in there. Does anyone in this room have a carbon monoxide monitor in their bedroom? <laughs> I did! So they in a pissing garage. Pipes in the walls, it was scary. My mum came home with the monitor and she was like, Jack, if the monitor turns black, get out. <laughs> That's it, end of the safety talk of the man. Done. Put my behind his jacket, just clocked out for the rest of the day. It's over. I've got a pet lizard in my room that uses like a canary down a mine scenario. It's a lizard, he doesn't do anything anyway. I've got to poke him in the eye to make sure he's still alive. Oh. All day, just like that, just a little jab in the eye. I was like, okay, you're alive, I'm alive. We're going to go through this together, Pedro. It's called Pedro, but this is just a quick little like advert for lizards, by the way. If you are thinking about getting a pet lizard, go to the eyelash gecko, that's what I got. I got my pet lizard for graduating university. Yes, I would have preferred money. Yes, I would have. Yes, I would have. All mates got money. My sister's boyfriend's brother breeds, bleed, like, breeds lizards. Just breeds them, and like he was just like a well done for finishing uni, mate. Shook me hand. Little lizard. A lizard, I've just got this little dumb lizard in the house and he just had nothing at all. And he's just, he's just been in there in the garage for a while. And also when I first moved into the garage, my mum put up a curtain rail for me. Uh, no curtains. <laughs> just the rail. My mum won't put a curtain rail for me. She's like, because Jack, I'm going to put some curtains up and eventually it will feel like there's a window. <laughs> That's right, some of you thought there was a window. No, there wasn't. Never was. And I fell for every morning. I lived there. Waking up, I was like, oh, what's day look like for me? Ah, oh, bricks. Bricks. <laughs> and it's not the type of garage even where you can go from like a kitchen or a utility room into the garage. I just go outside my own house and scratch on the end of that door like an animal. <laughs> Looking at my five year old niece who feels like a big girl at the moment because she's learned how to lock doors. <laughs> And a little dog called Monica, she's a German spit, she's white and fluffy, she's got one tooth, she thinks like shit, she's burned on the whole family, but we love her regardless. 
Her only crime has still been alive at this point. <laughs> Little Monica's looking at me, just like, why are you outside, mate? What happens? It's like, I've gone away for one month, Monica. Why are you outside? <laughs> Some smelly little dog, Jack. Are you a smelly little dog? I think I am, Monica. <laughs> fucking sucks. And it, like, the biggest clue that I lived in a garage as well. It wasn't the type of garage where you can go for, like, you know, like, no door like that. I had to start down here and lift it up like I'm sort of a mad scientist going in the house. It's horrid. And there's nice points about like still living at home and stuff, like because when my nieces and stuff, my sister and that, they've all moved out now. But there was nice points about hanging out with my nieces. Me and my five-year-old niece would sit down and watch loads of films together, which was lovely. Uh, we, we sat down to watch Chicken Run, great film. Mel Gibson's finest work, some might say. <laughs> Plays a rooster, what a harmless role for Mel. How could he get it wrong? And me and my five-year-old niece just sat there and she's asking me loads of sweet questions. She's 35. About five minutes into the film, first question. Why are those chickens running? <laughs> it's a great first question. That's going to happen loads during this film. That's a theme. That's a theme. <laughs> Ten minutes into the film, next question comes up, and because she's only five, she's talking quicker than she can think. <laughs> Why is chicken? <laughs> You know what, we sparked up a joint and chat down for a while, you know. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we're all chicken. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I get bored. I get bored, like, right, of course I don't want to stay living in the fens or where I live, in a tiny little village in the fens. It's dull. All my mates have now left. I've only got one mate left in my little village now, like my mate Adam Ball, but because we're boys, I call him Bully. Standard boy nickname rules, just put a Y on the end of your last name, that's it. Can't really do it with mine, Campbell, Campbelli, sounds like an Italian dessert. Because we're in Baldy, but because also we're boys, we have disgusting things too, like ball bag, ball skin, shit like that. But now recently we started calling him Shoes because he had a nightmare he couldn't get his shoes off. So now, like, so now me and Shoes are just left in the village. Boy and Peter, it's just me and Shoes, it's all right. Me and Shoes, our big dreams, we want to move to Leicester. <laughs> That's how low my like, expectations, like, expectations in life are, that's why. So I went to university in Leicester, didn't go to the good one. Uh, went to the shit one, went to De Montfort, because I thought it was in the south of France, that's why. <laughs> and if you ever, like, if you are from Leicester and stuff, you're from Burgundy, you know Leicester quite well. My mum didn't know Leicester that well, so I'll describe it to you very, very quickly for those who don't know what Leicester is like. Uh, I'm at a Greg's. I can see another Greg's. That's Leicester. That's Leicester covered. <laughs> Love Greg's, love Leicester. Great. Because all I want to do, I want to live in a place where I can walk to a train station and walk to the bank. We can't do that at all. In our village, we've got a shop and a cow. And the cow's the mayor. We love the cow. That's great. And I get bored all the time in a little village. And so here's some things that I like to do when I get bored. Uh, thing number one, I like watching snooker and rewind so it looks like the referee's stealing the ball. <laughs> It's a snooker joke, isn't it? Don't hear him often. Jack, how did that snooker joke come about? Uh, I was watching snooker, let on the moment when it rewind, just wrote that down. Took the rest of the day off, I was chuffed a bit. So like, mm. And I'm like, no, no, there's theme park. We don't live near any decent theme parks. You've got Alton Towers that isn't too far for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah baby, Alton Towers for life. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Of course, a good one. And what I like doing when I go to Alton Towers, I like buying t-shirts of me on a ride, and I got bored of that, so I go even further with it. I buy t-shirts of families I didn't even know. <laughs> it's 100% more fun. You know, just there in the queue, and they're like, oh yeah, there'll be a family next year. So I like, oh, can we have that one, please? It's like, yeah, these two, bring it in. Like that. And you just wear it, and you follow them around all day. <laughs> Jack, how did that joke come about? I did that. <laughs> I'm not allowed to go to Alton Towers anymore. <laughs> But I do have a mug of a Filipino family on the video, so it's all right for me. But the worst thing about it, like, I'd consider moving to Birmingham as well. Birmingham's on like, my top five list of places I'd consider moving. I like the place, it's cool. And also because you've got decent public transport. In our little village, we get none. You're saying no. I'd say we get none at all. You completely forgot this was live, didn't you? Like, but like, in our little village, we get like one bus, but no one knows when it's coming. We treat that bus like the eclipse. We go mad for that bus. We love the bus. And you have to learn how to drive in our little village as well, because like, we get no like, public transport. I passed my driving test first time, but just to be sure, I did four more. <laughs> After I failed my third driving test, I went on beta blockers, 
to slow down my heart rate. I'm quite a chilled out guy. My mum was like, take these. They'll chill you out. It's like, no, they'll just make my heart beat like a blue whale. That's what we'll do. It slows down your heart rate, just once in a minute, like that. I'm just going past you. Super mellow doing a three point turn on my driving test. Just chilled as fuck. Call the instructor, bitch. Why is chicken man? You know. Also, after I found my third driving test, my sister started taking me to pets at home to cheer me up. Quite nice of her. She was like, come on, Jack, we'll go look at the rabbits. But I am not letting for mice of men. That's not okay. Thank you. Yeah. My favourite joke in the world. I love it when people laugh at it. <laughs> GCSEs. Yeah, did yeah. yeah. I did all my driving tests in Cambridge as well. And Cambridge is a horrid place to drive around. It's just cyclists everywhere. I'm scared as anything, like just driving along, hearts would like that was freaking out. There was a cyclist in front of the car, there was a cyclist behind the car, two cyclists appeared either side of the car as well. I looked in the review mirror and there's another cyclist in the back seat now for some reason. <laughs> Opened up the glove box, there were tiny cyclists in there! <laughs> and I did my fifth and final test in my own car. And my first ever car that I had was a Hyundai Atos. You don't know what a Hyundai Atos looks like? If you were a child and you drew a car, <laughs> and I just made that car, and that was it. And I bought like a crazy old man called Doug. Right? The Atos, the Hyundai Atos, is a very boxy affair. It's supposed to be Pac Man. Mum was bright red, very square car, and Doug had also painted the alloys red as well, for no reason. <laughs> and I said to Doug, Doug, why have you painted the alloys red? And I'll never forget what Doug said to me for the rest of my life. Because I had red paint! And that was the end of Doug's story. <laughs> we can all relate to Doug. I had red paint and now I've got red jeans. It's how life works. It's rolling. It's fine. <laughs> But the main reason why I don't like public transport at all, I'm sure some of you, when you're leaving tonight, you're going to be in a taxi on your way home, and that's great. Uh, I'm not a big fan of taxis, because one time I was a student at the Montford University in Leicester, I was 40p short in a taxi, and the guy wouldn't let me go. I had to live in a taxi for five years. <laughs> that didn't happen, because called Matt Comedy is, just make it up. <laughs> Never even lived in a garage. <laughs> It is. It's like saying that for people to look at me and be like, you fucking better live than a gas. Hope you look little lizard dice too, you liar. No, that's not. The bit happened was it was me and shoes in the taxi. And I was looking at shoes, it's like, shoes, what are we gonna do? He's 40 feet short, he's not let me go. What am I gonna do, shoes? And shoes just looked at me and said, why don't you just suck him off? <laughs> is that how you live your life, shoes? This is a terrible way to live your life. What do you mean just it's 40p shoes? Is that what you do if you've not got 40p at the bar or something? You just be like, well, get it out. This isn't the same way to live, shoes. I don't know what 40p's worth of blowjob looks like. Is that it, shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for Jack Campbell. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>